Hi, everybody. My name is Felipe. Uh, my teammates are Rodrigo, Fernando, uh, Raissa, and Bruno. And today, we're going to present you our project uh, focused on the use of used cooking oil for the production of biofuels for the aviation market in Brazil. That's our title. So uh, I'm going to do a little introduction here about the, the topic. So one of the world's main concerns nowadays is the carbon dioxide emissions. And the aviation market, the aviation field, contributes a lot for that. Uh, emission. It's like 2% of the entire chain emission. And in order to produce uh, biofuel for the aviation, we have to, we need to collect the feedstock or produce it. And, and then we need to have refineries to, to process this feedstock. And then we need logistics to take this feedstock from the collected and then take it to the, to the refineries, and after that, take it to the market. So everything linked, uh, providing so social, economical, and environmental benefits for the society. And that's the goal of, of our project, and that's what I'm going to talk to you, to introduce you. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you why we, we chose used cooking oil. Well, we have plenty of feedstock in Brazil uh, every month. Millions of gallons are wasted in, in, in the entire country. For example, in the city of Sao Paulo, 5.7 million of, millions of gallons are wasted every month. And, and this, from this amount, only 5% is recycled. So we can improve that a lot. And this is a feasible project. You're going to see throughout the, our, the entire project, our, our presentation, you're going to see that this is really possible to do. Uh, because we have, in order to have a good, a good project for the aviation, to, for the biofuel aviation, we have to, uh, to replace 2% of the entire fuel used. And according to our data from the Secretary of Transportation of Sao Paulo, uh, 1.2 million of gallons are, produ are used per month in the state of Sao Paulo. And according to the previous data, it, it is only 23% of the total waste uh, used cooking oil in the city of Sao Paulo. So that's something possible to do. And now I'm going to tell you uh, the, prob the problem of using used cooking oil. Well, used cooking oil is a good in the, in the, the meaning that it has low cost to process for, with the HIFA process, but for, for collecting it, it's really hard because it's everything spread in the entire area. So, but we can change it. For example, I'm going to compare here a plane production. If we, if we produce only one plane, the cost of production is going to be really high. But if we produce a lot of airplanes, the cost of production is going to decrease. So if, if we can do something to uh, improve the collection of this feedstock, we can use this kind of feedstock so, because the cost of coll collection is going to be really, go it's going to decrease. So here you have a big picture of our project. We're going to use, uh, we're going to have partnerships with cooperatives in the city of Sao Paulo and in other areas to collect this kind of feedstock in, in the entire area. And then they will transport this for our eco-social centers. That's something that we're going to build. And after transporting that for the eco-social centers, uh, we're going to take it for our main facility in Social Zedos campus that we're going to talk everything about later on on the project. And then we have refinery there to, to process that feedstock. And then why choose Sao Paulo, right? Well, Sao Paulo has a the highest density population uh, density of demographic density of population in Brazil and so that means that we have a lot of feedstock to collect in that area and also we're uh, Sao Paulo is really close to a lot of airports some of the main airports in the country for example Guarulhos Sao Paulo and Campinas which has a lot of passengers per year as you can see in this picture we're we're here so 
we have a lot of uh, airports nearby, so that means we have a uh, market for that kind of uh, biofuel in that area. So this is our structure of the project. We're going to have uh, the cooperatives, that's, that's what I'm going to talk to you about, collecting from, directly from the population the oil is used cooking oil. And then we have the eco-social centers to uh, start this kind of feedstock. And after that, the feedstock is going to be uh, transported to the, to, our refi to the refinery and to the main facility in San Jose Campus and then uh, sent to the refineries. Well, the, co the cooperatives are uh, already existing companies or new ones that uh, already do this kind of uh, service, like collecting in the entire area, in the entire city. So we're going to have partnerships with them. And in order to make something feasible for them, we have to guarantee that they will have a feedstock to collect and somebody to buy it. And how can we do it is uh, the awareness campaigns that we're going to make. And the market for buying it is going to be the refineries because this is a, a field that will always have a market, but the biofuels for aviation. So that's how we can guarantee for them they will have a market to sell it. And how they're going to do it? It's going to be in people's houses or in the companies that use uh, cooking oil. For example, people can call them, oh, come here to pick up my used cooking oil so they can go there, go ahead and take it there and drop off in our eco-social centers. And also, uh, we are going to make partnerships with uh, the municipal authorities to, to make some collecting points in our already existing selective points of collection so people can drop off their used cooking oil in those locations in the city. And people will be advised to do it in two liters, bottle, two liters bottles because it's uh, they already standard for this kind of collection and it's easier for everybody to find this kind of uh, recipient. So that's how it's gonna, be, gonna work. The, the, the cooperatives will collect it and, and send it to our uh, eco-social centers. And that's what Rodrigo is gonna talk for you now, the eco-social centers. All right, so all the oil is now is collected by the cooperatives and now it's addressed to our eco-social centers, right? Exactly. And to best allocate these eco-social centers, we made a study in Sao Paulo dividing the city in different special zones, as you can see here. So we divided in 31 different so, uh, special zones to best locate these eco-social zones, eco-social centers. So just in this area, we have more than 11 million people living here. That's a lot. We have more than 6, 8 million gallons of oil just wasted per year. So our main goal is to provide the means necessary to build 49 new eco-social centers in this area and in the sur surrounding areas as Guarulhos, São Bernardo, São Caetano do Sul, and Santo André. Our main target is to recycling 16 million gallons of used cooking oil per year. But you may ask, what exactly is uh, eco-social center? That's a good question. This is our eco-social center. It's not only an oil storage facility, but it's, always, it's also a culture, a leisure, and a sportive center. What you're going to do, basically, is first develop a basic infrastructure to collect the oil and work in, by a system of goals. First, we're going to set a certain amount of, goal, uh, of oil to be collected by the local community. The more you collect, when you set this, when you reach this goal, then a new feature will be built. So you can have a swimming pool near your home. You can have a sport sport courts. You can have a skate park. You can have libraries. You can have auditorium. The more you collect, the more your local community will have this feature, just for you, for your family, and for your friends. Pretty cool, no? So in order to optimize the social impacts of this project, we we made a preliminary study of the actual position of public parks and sports centers. Because you don't want to build an eco-social center where you already have a public park. 
So let's op optimize that. So the number, as I said before, the number of activities offered by the population will depend on the local effort of recycling this oil. The more you collect, the better for you, the better for your family, the better for your friends. And this system is organized by goals. To, in order to increase the motivation of the population, these goals will be uh, accompanied by awareness campaigns. So together with the Secretary of Education, we'll have people trained to teach our children how to recycle, why to recycle, and how that recycling process will be good for them. We'll have internet, television, and mobile apps easily accessed for the people. So you are at home, and you have oil that you don't need anymore, and you really want a, a public swimming pool near your home. So just take your cell phone, oh look, if you just collect 16 uh, liters per, per day, I will have this in two months. So I just improve my family and say to everybody, hey, let's together, let's recycle this oil because we want to live better in, this, in our local community, right? That's perfect. So these are our eco-social centers. This is a way to motivate people to really engage in our program. And, but you may ask, but what if the eco-social center is fully developed? What then? I don't want to recycle anymore. I have every, everything that I want near my home. But that's the key. Working together with the local administration, we can give up to 15% of tax discounts on the habitation tax, called IPTU, as you all know. So you have everything you want near you. You, you want to recycle it. You feel good when you recycle because you have a lot of benefits, and you still have tax discounts. That's great, isn't it? And after the oil is collected, it's now addressed to our main facility, which Bruno is going to talk more about. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. Good afternoon, everybody. So, our main facility will be located in São José dos Campos. Why São José dos Campos? Because São José dos Campos is already a main, a main hub for aerospace industry. It has the headquarters of Embraer, and it has also a, a Boeing facility for research and technology on biofuels. So, it's a strategic location for our main, our main facility. It's also close to the a large population. São Paulo, it's about 50 miles from São José dos Campos. So we can collect a lot of oil and take to this place. This is also close to the main airports already talked about, like Guarulhos International Airport, Viracopos, and Congonhas. And there is already an existing jet fuel, jet fossil fuel refinery from Petrobras, and they produce uh, hydrogen there. So it will facilitate the production of a HIFA because I will explain later about the HIFA process. And I will tell more about our agreements later. So our main facility will have a logistics office and also they will manage the tank trucks to come from the Sao Paulo, the eco-social centers, and take up the oil to our main facility then we will process this oil, filtering it, and then we will store this oil with a capacity of 300,000 gallons. And then we will deliver it for our biggest partner. Our big, biggest partner is Petrobras. They, they had signed a letter of commitment to build and operate a HIFA refinery by end of 2015. So, we, they will use the HIFA process to produce jet biofuel. The HIFA process, it's a hydro process, ester and fatty acids. It can use it, uh, use it cooking oil, oil bearing plants, or tallow as feedstock. And they, they will convert it to lipids and then to jet biofuel. So Petrobras is also responsible to the blend because as a drop-in biofuel, they will just blend it with the fossil fuel and deliver it to Guarulhos International Airport. Because Petrobras is already the, they supply 100% of the oil, of jet fuel consumption in Guarulhos International Airport. 
they do that by ducts that already exist from this refinery in São José dos Campos to Guarulhos International Airport. So we are taking advantage of this whole structure to only drop in this biofuel with the regular fuel and then it will be ready to use in the airport. And another partner is the government. They are giving us the land to build our main facility in São José dos Campos, and the municipal governments are giving us the land to build our ecosocial centers. So you can ask me about the risks. What if the people don't, do not recycle their cooking oil? So our main goal is to increase the education on recycling. We will do that about with the awareness campaigns and lectures in the schools that Rodrigo already told. But if we still have a problem to get this used cooking oil, we can use tallow because Brazil is a huge producer of beef. So we have a lot of tallow available in Sao Paulo state and it's not far from our facility. We can also use Dratrofa, which is the government has some uh, good uh, investment on the debt for far small farmers. And another, the last alternative would be the soybean, which Brazil's produce, it's the second largest producer. So we have a lot of soybean to use in this kind of process. Now, Haisa is tell, talk more about the impact areas. Thank you. Uh, to make this a sustainable project, we need to talk about three main impact areas, uh, which are the environmental, the social, and the economical. Uh, first, let's talk about the environmental. Uh, the waste of cooking oil is a huge problem for the for the for environmental sphere. Uh, talking uh, about the water, uh, one liter of oil makes 20,000 liters of water useless. So this is a huge number, and it also it's harmful for aquatic life because the decomposition process uses oxygen soaked in water, so this is a big deal. And now talking about the soil, when the a high quantity of oil reaches the soil, it turns it into waterproofing. So waterproofing oil is a, it's one of the main reasons of flood, which is a big problem in Brazil. You all know about it. And it also makes the, the soil useless for farming, which may affect the food production. We don't want that at all. And I move to the economical sphere. Well, when the oil is weighted, wasted through the conventional plumbing, it may cause this. Yeah, it's not pretty. And the, the government uh, spends a lot of money trying to fix this. So reducing the waste oil through the conventional plumbing, we can reduce uh, these kind of stipends. And we also have the creation of jobs, uh, which is an economical and social advantage. But here we have the most, uh, I think, the most important um, advantage of this project, uh, which is we are bringing the feedstock close to where the jet fuel can be produced. Uh, produce the jet fuel is out of the scope of our project, but we are bringing it close to where it can be really produced. So we are creating a foundation for the development of the jet fuel industry. And I'm moving to the social sphere. And with this eco-social centers, uh, they will work as a community integrator. So uh, they will provide sports, education, and culture for the, for the whole community. And then they will bring the idea that recycling re is uh, related with a high quality life. This is a good thing, and it will also, I think this is important for Brazilian uh, citizens uh, to see something good coming from their own efforts, so I think this is a good uh, social impact. And I'm going to talk about the budget a little bit. And we have here uh, the budget organized by years. Uh, in the first year, our main uh, costs will, will be applied on construction construction and land purchase and on the second and the third year we have uh, awareness campaigns and maintenance of the facilities personal spend and those kind of things uh, which give us a total cost of about 17 million dollars 
but 28% uh, of this total will be shared with our partners, which give us a total of about $12 million uh, through these three years. I think it's good. Uh, now Fernando will give us um, some final considerations about the project. Thank you, Heisa. So for the final considerations, uh, as we presented here, user cooking oil has a lot of potential to be used as a feedstock for jet fuel production, jet biofuel. Uh, not only because it has many environmental benefits, but it also uses uh, consolidate uh, refinement techniques and a lot of infrastructure that already exists. And we think that the social engagement in this project would take this to another level. Not only, uh, we're not only focusing on the feedstock itself, but how the society uh, makes this work. And it's a sustainable project since we're focusing on the feedstock, on the society, and the economic in the long term. So Sao Paulo uh, is our choice, Southeast region. Uh, because 80% of the origins and destinations in Brazil comes from the 15 biggest airports, but the Southeast region is responsible for 45% of these origins and destinations. So for the next few years, with the growth of the Brazil economy and the global economy, this, this will grow a lot. So we have to be prepared for that. So our project is work with the government. We, um, we're they play an important role in this project. We're, go we're planning tax reductions, not only for the society, but also for the producers and for the airlines that will buy this, this fuel, this blended, uh, blended fuel. Uh, the creation of new jobs and the growth of the economy itself. But uh, to change the world is difficult to do it by yourself. We have to work together with everybody, not alone. So that's why we're asking just for 12% of the max budget. So we can work together with other projects and improve the industry itself and not be focused in one phase of the problem. And then together we can try to change the, the world. Thank you. Um, if anybody have any questions. Does the pipeline to the airport already exist? The duct work getting to the airport, is that already in place? Yes, from San Jose de Campos to Sao Paulo. Yeah, okay. I was just curious about the secondary waste. So after the oils are refined, the off product, is there more or less created? And what happens with it? Uh, from using the cooking oil as uh, feedstock for the, the jet fuel? Is that what you're asking? Well, uh, this cooking oil uh, can produce mostly 100% jet fuel, so the waste of that is not a big issue. That's why we choose that, because it's mostly everything that you can get, you can transform in jet fuel. Any other questions? I have a question. You mentioned earlier about how it is currently causing some issues like in the plumbing area. Then if, how is, the, how is it currently, if that's just a part of it, how is the, the most, the majority of the cooking oil being, uh, how's it being dealt with at this point? Is it, today? How, how's how it being disposed of? Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so today is actually a big issue with that because um, most people just drop the, the coconut oil on their sink and this go to the, to the, to the city plumbing. So uh, the city has to clean those, those duds. They, they have to make an entire effort to clean those uh, obstructed ducts by the oil. And that's, that's a big issue. Um, is there an existing market for um, cooking oil. I, th I believe you showed some um, some proportion of the cooking oil from Sao Paulo is already used, a small percentage, five percent or something like that. What is what is that used for, and how will that interact with your um, plan? Will there be competition for um, different uses for the used cooking oil? So today uh, it already exists uh, some use for this recycled 
recycled cooking oil that we have, and most part of that goes to biodiesel um, for uh, alternative purposes. But we think that increasing that, we, it will not be a competition itself, but uh, we can prove both together because once you produce uh, bio jet fuel, uh, a part of that, uh, it's also biodiesel for automotive purposes. So we believe that increasing this recycling program, we can improve both. And with all the awareness campaigns, we, we cannot only focus on the jet fuel, but it will help biodiesel itself and we can improve the entire problem with this, uh, with this fuel. Thank you. And with that, we're out of time. So thanks. For Thank you very much. much.